Hello, welcome to episode 5 of how to make a slime launcher 1 mod. I'm going to be covering how to make a custom behavior this time. Um, since last time I did do some edits to our code beforehand, I went ahead and added the Slimepedia entries for our hen and chick. Um, they are just the same as we did for the veggie and all that, so they aren't anything special. So. I'm going to go ahead and set up a new slime so we can go ahead and begin making our behavior for it. See you then. As you can see, I'm back and I have gotten our slime working. He's the right size, he looking all cool, and we need to make him some behaviors. I don't know where they'll are. Oh, okay, the tar's over there. And he's over there. Okay. Oh, I made his favorite, the meat, the hen that we made last time. You can go look at the slime pea I made for him. You can see it's all working. Uh, let me hide this real quick. See, it's all working. Cool. Now, we're going to go ahead and start on our behavior. Um, I haven't made Largos or Gordo for him right now, but you can do that if you want. Uh, you have to modify the code a little bit to make Largos and Gordos, uh, because right now we really only have it set up for one type of slime, so you can change it up a little bit to make it work with the others as well. Anyway. Now, we have all this. It's time. Let's see, let's make our new behavior. So we're going to need a new class. Let's go ahead and add a new item. We're going to call this our super epic behavior. Here. Now we have this. We're going to set this as a mono. It's not working. Um, oh, wait, wait. If I said mono behavior, okay, then tell me that I need to be using Unity. Okay. Let's do using Unity engine. And then let's look up mono behavior. Okay, they have a U in there. Um, I do, I'm not sure, I believe that is what we want. I don't think that we're going to want something else. Yeah, mono behavior should work fine. Um, let me just hide this real quick. This is going to make it a component for our slimes. So what we're going to want inside of here. Uh, that's not what I wanted. I want here. Um, we're going to need a few things. We're going to need a um, well first, we should probably just create the awake. Let me go ahead and copy some of the functions. That's not the one I wanted. I want to go to you. Have private void. Void update, we can create a private void start. This is going to bug out a bit because I just don't want to mess with all that nonsense. You. So we have update and start. I thought there was an awake as well, but this will look like it. So what we're going to do is start is what happens when it first starts and updates what happens every few seconds and we're gonna have to set them up first of all let me see how I should set up behaviors because I all right we just need to set up a private we're going to set up a private thing if I go to time director uh, instance oh director how do I see what time it is? 
for now. I thought I am very lost, aren't I? Ah, I was confused. Alright, we don't want time director. We want time dot time, which is a float. So what we're going to need is to get a private float. And we're gonna call this last val update. Let's do equal to zero f. And then we're also gonna want a private float. As, uh, actually, let's call this next val update. Will be we got next val update, and we have next uh, dir change equals zero f. What are we going to do here? Since this is on our slime, we're going to be accessing its slime appearance, which luckily I do believe I have code somewhere where I can reference to see how we're going to do that. Um, and then I can, you know, of course, share it with you. I think it's in our fundamental slimes mod. I have a ton of slime behaviors, so I'm going to go look at this real quick to find one that we need. So we have which one? That's quarter color. color. CD. This should allow us to do that. Oh, and we need one more. We're going to call this a public. Uh, not public, private bool is upstate equals false. I'm going to start at false. And start shouldn't have to do anything because we have everything defined right here. Rather, we can have everything run in our update, which is um, if Time dot time is greater than the next change, then what we're going to do is let's do um, is upstate equals not is upstate. So we'll change the direction to the opposite and set next or change equals time dot time plus equals um, unity random. I want to just do not random. So we're going to be using unity engine dot random. Can you just all right fine. Using random equals unity engine dot random. That's range, random range. We need two floats. Uh, it should be min max, so we're gonna do one f to three to uh, five f. Okay, there's another one that just looks the same, I assume. Okay, cool. Uh, can't be assigned. No, I want it plus. Right, so. Oh, we now have this, so this is going to be set to a differing, an increase from time. And it will set what state it is. Flip the state. Um, so 
we can actually set this to true because when we start, I think we want it in the down state, not the up state. What our behavior is going to be doing is changing the color of the center. And when it changes the color of the center, it is going to um, be either causing a force up or a force down. Uh, so we can actually add another line of code, which is u. In all this dot, and let's go ahead and um, color. I believe it's set color. And if I go um, to U, I should be able to find it. I'm going to go look for it real quick, which one we're going to be doing. So. It's called glow. I'm going to be setting the color known as underscore glow top. And oh, yeah. And we are going to also first set this to an if is upstate. Else will also be this. And let's go look at my sprite for it. This is what we're going to want for the down state. So we can go ahead and get this. This is 255, 238, 129. So we're going to need to keep that in mind. There we go. And then we're going to do new color 32. So far, we're just setting up the changing state aspect. Then we have to set up the actual change. So what is this doing? Um, as I said, this is what happens every single frame or so. And this happens when it first starts up. These are different variables that we're going to be using in our component, as you can see. Um, this is going and finding the material of the slime, the primary material, and changing a color aspect of it. So that's what we're doing right now. And this is what color we're going to want. This is the color type we want that we want to change, what color of it. And we're going to be setting it to this. And what we're going to want is, of course, our 255, 238, 129, and 255. Now, this is going to be a shift. Let's go here. We're going to shift it roughly 90 degrees and get this. And then we're going to look at this 255 value. It's 255, 129, 213. So roughly what we're going to do is we're going to just swap the green and the blue. That's what we can do. So let's just do this. Let's do it. This is the 129. And this is the 238. There we go. Now we have two different states. And now what we're going to do is go outside of here. And if I'm greater than next val update, time dot time, then what we're going to do is First of all, set next val update equals um, time, time plus 0.1f. And I forgot exactly how much this increments by, but this should make it so that it doesn't go too fast, I assume. And we might lower this as well, or lower this depending on how slow it the functions they were going to do if um, if is up state then we're going to take game game object dot transform dot local position doesn't really matter plus new vector three vector three is going to be zero 
and this is the y. We're going to increase the y by 1. That's it. Else. Only assignment call include. So it's a statement. This is. Okay, uh, plus equals. There we go. Um, else, we're going to do this again. And then we're going to set it to negative 1. So this means if it's in the up state, it will increase the y by 1, making it go up. If it's in the down state, which is the other, this is false, then it's going to cause it to decrease by 1. We could also cause this to change the velocity instead should probably function better. So instead of doing local position, we can do, just to make it be better, is velocity or um, dot velocity object, I forgot. Oh. Uh, hold on. I know I do this. I have done it before. Okay, that's not what I want. Uh, yeah, let's look it up real quick then. How to change velocity in Unity. Great, that's so useful. So if we go to this, it's just we have to do dot its component. Rigid body. Oh, and we can do this to both. And what this is going to do is instead of just moving it, we're going to actually change its velocity to increase or decrease. So next, we actually have to add it to the slimes. So you're probably wondering, how do you add it to a slime? Well, it's very similar to when we earlier did this. Remember how we got the component and we did all this? But instead of getting the component, what we're going to do is go here, do super epic slime dot item two dot add component. And then we're going to put our behavior in here. We called our behavior the super epic behavior. That's it. This should theoretically work. But we actually have to test our behavior to see if it works how we want it to. So if we go here. And adding behaviors isn't too difficult. Just depends on how experienced you are in Unity with the ability to actually create a behaviors code. And this is a very simple behavior, which is just going to check if time has passed to change the velocity of our slime to either go up or down. It also changes the color of the slime. It's glow, which is what we're changing. We're changing what glow is inside of the slime, depending on if it was pushing it up or pushing it down. So we'll see how fast time changes um, and see if this is going to cause a problem. If it's too fast or if it's too slow or what. So far, no errors, which is good, but it's more would be an error that you would see in runtime. So let's go ahead and see if we have any problems. Uh, 
as you can see, our slime is extra heavy and now it's floating. See how I had pink glow? See how it's very fast, how fast it's changing? You can't even see the glow. So it's a little bit fast. I'd say that the shifting is about right. The increase in velocity works well. But when it switches is a bit too fast. So let's go increase how often it switches so that it takes a little longer. So let's go here and let's go to our behavior and let's set this to instead 5f to 10f or possibly to 15f. This way it takes a little bit longer before it switches, but so far it works well. <laughs> That was a wonderful sneeze right there. Um, so we're going to be seeing that. And if you're wondering about some other things in the behavior, game object just gets the game object the component is on. And what we're doing here is getting a component in it. This is the slime appearance applicator, which is related to the slime appearance. And this is the rigid body, which is related to the... Um, kind of a lot of physical parts of a 3D object in Unity. Anyway, let's go ahead and update it. So it should take a little longer. There's a lot of things you can learn over time trying to make custom behaviors, but for the most part, they're pretty simple to make. This material didn't take us very long to make, or this behavior, and it's not too bad for a behavior, although it's pretty boring, only making the slime go up or down. You can also make it do whatever you want to the velocity, so you can multiply the velocity by numbers. You can increase its position, so see how it's heavy right now. You guys are having your own little party over there, and I don't like it. Go ahead and pick our slime up and go around. Let's go ahead and throw our slime here just to test it. Right now, it's in its yellow state, and you can make it save the state if you wanted to, but that's a little complicated. So right now, it's acting heavy, so it falls to the ground very easily. And soon, you should see it start flying. There you go. See how it's glowing pink now, like we changed? It's going down. It floats. Now it's heavy again. We can see how our behavior works pretty well. We can go get ourselves. Um, gee, it's already full, isn't it? Yeah. That should be just about all for the making of slimes material. Um, we can spawn a bunch of them. Spawn super. You can see that there's no errors or anything. We can spawn 10 of them if we wanted to all around and it looks like they're all changing at the same time right. mm, that's not good so why are they all changing simultaneously? Well, it probably has to do with the fact that we set our, um, we're using it Unity Engine, not random. So one way we can fix this bug is perhaps using a different random engine. Ah, no, that's fine. So since we're using this, the possible fix is to get rid of this equals system random. Then we're going to do a 
then what we're going to do is a static private random equals random random equals new random. Okay. Uh, new random instead of doing this we're going to do and I do random dot hmm. this is a problem. So, so what we can do instead is do this, and we're going to have to convert you to a float. I don't think this works. I don't think so, okay, you can. Um, and what we're going to do is have to apply a little thing to this to make it do what we want. First of all, we have to add five. This is going to turn it so that at minimum it's going to be 5f. And then when it increases all the way up to possible 15 to make it go up to 15, um, at one, that would have to be 10. So. 10 times. That means at 1, it'll be 10. n plus 5, giving us 15. So this should give us the value we want, no matter. This should give us always good values and should get rid of our problem. Plus, since it's shared between all of our instances, that means it's going to... Um, it should mean that they should affect each other as well, so that they don't all generate the same random. Uh, did I set this? I think so. If I didn't, I'm a goofball. I'm a goofball. So, so far, very simple behavior here. Not many issues with it so far, and it's done it's working pretty much how we want it to. Of course, you'll have to do tinkering yourself when you make your own behaviors, possibly ask around or learn how to use certain Unity features to do what you want. This is a very simple slime behavior where we just cause it to go to do different states, which either lift it or lower it. And if you make... Um, Largos with it, the Largos will have the behavior and do the same thing. They also don't save it across the save file, so when you back them, it doesn't save it, it doesn't save it across the save file. But it's still changing at the same time. That's not what I just made sure of that. They're all becoming changing at the same time. Huh. Did I not update it then? I might not have updated it. This should have fixed it, as far as I understand it. That normally would fix it.
So we have to figure out why. If not. And just to make sure that's in the code. We can always go here. Look into our mod and see if It should be working. Since they're still changing constantly, then I have a new plan. Since this didn't work, we can continue tinkering with how we want this code to work. So we're going to, one, remove the fact that it's static. We're going to get rid of the static part. And to start, we're going to do dot random dot c. We're just going to tell it to generate a double for no apparent reason. It should relatively be the same code, but maybe it will fix our problem. Sometimes the strangest fixes work. This is somewhat similar to a problem I've had in the past where. Um, the mysterious slime and z-test would always have certain shared aspects due to the random element generating the same thing. So, I'm trying similar fixes that might be able to get rid of that problem. So, this does two different things. One, it got rid of the static, so they're not all sharing the same random thing which should have helped with this problem, but it didn't. And next, I also changed it so that it would automatically generate something. So it would automatically differ them all by trying to generate something. I would have liked a lot of random things let you change their seeds and create a random seed for them. I was going to try and generate a random... I would have liked to generate a random seed for our thing so that they would all have different seeds, but... Maybe this will work similarly. And no. Not. Those are all spawned at the same time. Or will they always sync with each other? I spawn you, and then I spawn you, and then I spawn you, and then I spawn you. They changed. They all do it simultaneously. Maybe it's the material. I don't know. Okay, so they can be in different states, but now we have a different little bug. And that's that their colors are changing. Weird. I'm not too shocked about this bug. Um, something that can fix it. Let's do this on start equals... to do op 
object dot Pity. Um, let me just do this real quick. Uh, set this to be pity object. What? No, I wanted to okay. do object, and then I was trying to set it so that we were using the unity object dot instantiate material instantiate this material that way I have a copy of it okay. now apparently I don't need object great and I don't need this cool um so what this will do is just regenerate this next Uh, I don't believe, is there an on destroy? We can go ask if there is a mono behavior on destroy so we can pull this up. Does a mono behavior have on destroy? Oh my gosh, stop. I hate this thing so much. We can create an on destroy. So private void on destroy. I'm not going to um, hit you not destroy. I don't know what this is doing. Okay. And maybe, okay, apparently this isn't actually necessary. It's just destroy. The idea is that it will destroy the material so that we don't get infinite copies that stay on forever. What this should do is make sure that they aren't all changing the same material. Um, let's get this. This should be the final time that we have to update it because we've worked through all of the things and made it work exactly how we want it to. You could have set a variable to the material as well. That way that you can just reference the material shorter and easier. And that's not what we wanted. How did you know reference? How did instantiate null reference? I'm going to keep all of this nonsense that you said. Oh, that's not needed. It's needed. This is, it. this is some good old nonsense. Uh, 
I should fix it. Again, the point is so that they're not all changing the same, and Statiate creates a copy of it so that they're not all changing the same material, causing them to override each other. So we can see that this video is a bit longer than I intended. However, It teaches everything it needs to. So now when we spit it out, and it's still bugged out. Isn't that the exact code that's run inside of? Let me check quickly. That is the exact same function that's run here. Exact same. Um, so, excluding that bug, which I created later on, uh, I don't have time to fix it right now, so I'm going to say goodbye, I hope you learned something, hope you enjoyed, and that's how you make a slime behavior. See you.